Good evening, Go Dogs. We are Dog Sports Live coming to you, recapping the Georgia Clemson game with Graham Coffee. I'm Josh Hancher. He's Dog Out West on the Twitter. I am Dog underscore Stats on Twitter. Big win last night, Graham. You traveled across the country to see. Big win. And big win. You were there. Yeah. Tell us. Tell us. I just was. Say something. How? <laughs> uh, no, it was. It was. Uh, it was a very fun time first of all just being back in an environment like that and being in a full stadium it felt like a cfp kind of environment um i heard kirby say that after the game and and i agreed like you know give credit to clemson fans they showed out that stadium was you know probably 50 50 or maybe 55 45 in georgia's favor but it it felt like a you know it felt like jacksonville really is what it felt like um uh, georgia florida game but yeah, man, all in all, um, I think my biggest takeaway just looking at this game is like you had a Georgia team that was banged up in some some pretty key spots. And I think we didn't realize going into that game just how decimated they were at wide receiver. Um, I haven't yeah, we- heard anyone or seen anyone make this point today, but like Curious Jackson was Georgia's leading receiver last year and he didn't play uh right. he, i and mean we, he didn't play any reps at wide receiver we talked about it you know like we Go were ahead. hopeful that darnell would play and then you know curious not playing at all or just on special teams was a total shocker yeah. to me i mean burton burton was the lone wide receiver with that played last year at all so we were i don't want to say decimated but in but yeah it was it was not the, the offensive especially in the wide receiver group that we expected to see yeah, 100%. And I, th- I think for Georgia to go into that game, uh, basically, you know, with with a lot of key pieces missing and for Kirby Smart and Todd Monken and Dan Lanning and everyone on that staff to design a game plan that allowed them to get out of there with a victory is in- – it's, it's, it's his best coaching job that I've ever seen. Like, that was the best – coaching what the most well-coached game in terms of game plan execution uh that that we've seen from kirby smart and like what they did on defense last night was incredible but i think you know uh, lost in all the studs that were out there in the front seven is that like dan jackson's a walk-on safety and he played some really key reps like on third and goal at the five yard line in the fourth quarter, he's lined up on the bottom one-on-one against a starting wide receiver from Clemson in man coverage. And, and he held him down. And I mean, like, you know, DJ looked that way and, and Jackson had good coverage and he had to go somewhere else with that ball. So what Georgia did last night, I think like is scary to think about, when you look at what's going to get back into the lineup over the course of the next month or two, probably, you know, between now and the Florida game, if you look at Tyke Smith coming back, you have another slot defender, another cover guy that is, you know, elite. He's a high level player. You have Darnell Washington coming back. We know what he can do. You've got uh, Pickens possibly coming back at some point. I'm not sure what's going on with the reek, but if, if he was to come back and then just with these wide receivers, Burton played, but you could tell he wasn't totally himself. He didn't look fully comfortable yet. I would say ditto for Arian Smith with the turf toe. Um, what I want to stress, cause I've seen a lot of Georgia fans talking about it today. Like, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of people be like, well, why did JT check down so much? JT wasn't checking down. Like that was the game plan. That's what was designed the the plan was let's get Clemson's D line having to ch- chase us laterally across the field. Let's run these screens. Let's run stuff to the sidelines and, you know, tire them out. And then the fourth quarter, let's pound them. And that's exactly what they did. And, and it worked. It worked to perfection. Um, but there was not deep routes being run. Like having been there in the stadium, I know a lot of times on TV, you know, you don't get the all 22 view, but the plays that were being called, there was not guys running, you know, way downfield. So, 
keep that in mind. Yeah, you know, before we get into some plays, you know, certainly um, the offense was not very efficient. You know, I've been preaching efficiency all all off season and, and stuff, and I know that game plans change, and you and you you scheme to the, the team you're playing, and you play to win the game, as Herm Edwards would say. But it is it was a little disappointing, even in a victory, to see sort of like not you know we were expecting explosives and and deep routes but again to your point it's like we didn't have those players that they had been practicing those plays with and and they you know we had a, we had a turnover a, a bad uh an unfortunate uh punt uh miss you know misplaying on the punt with chris milton just getting unlucky on that but all in all they played a you know as clean a game as they needed to to get the win um and to your point you know they they did want to grind them down and there was a huge game ending drive uh to not turn give the ball back to clemson and and, and to your point yeah we spread them out we wore them down uh, the uh, offensive line did what they needed to do to get that win and it was pretty exciting that last that last drive was awesome right was smash mouth football and I, I loved it and it was fun it was a little bit of celebration yeah. it was it was awesome i mean you know i was sitting with my dad uh last night and he made the statement on that last drive that it felt personal a little bit at that point. I mean, you think about these two schools, they recruit against each other for almost every guy that goes to one or the other. Um, They're 80 miles apart. Clemson's won two national titles with quarterbacks from the state of Georgia. Uh, There's a lot of, you know, they're, they're very enmeshed, even if they haven't played since 2014, these programs bump into each other on a daily basis. They, you know, after the game last night, I'm sure Kirby and Dabo were talking to the same recruits. So, to th- just at the end of that game, it felt like, you know, Georgia kind of had that chip on their shoulder where it was like, okay, you know, we we haven't really, like, done what we needed to do to put that kill shot in, and we're going to finish you guys. And truthfully, I think if Georgia had wanted to score on that last drive, they probably could have. Um there was no need to, and the smart thing to do was to run out the clock because, you know, yeah, that yeah. way Clemson yeah. can't go and uh, onside kick and, you know, fly down the field. There's, it takes all, you know, it takes all the guesswork out of it. But to your point about kind of being disappointed about the offense, um, what I think happened is that Georgia got in there and from the very jump, you know, the first two drives we saw Georgia, Georgia get pressure and, and get sacks and, like we talked about before the game, man, Georgia had more pass to win that game than Clemson did. Uh, we knew Clemson wasn't going to be able to run on UGA. Your, so yeah. many good take, so many good points you made coming into that game, and that was absolutely one of them. Thank you. <laughs> it was just you. I mean, you. Yeah, well, appreciate you, it, man. You, you you covered this game so well, and you you know you got me ready for it. And and, and all, sorry, I, I broke your stride there, but that was a great point that I was thinking about. All no, you're sorry, good. Man. No, thank you. I, I appreciate the kind words. And yeah, I mean, I think with, with this game, it was just one of those things where we saw Georgia get in there and early in the game was the only time we really saw some of those downfield routes. Um, you know, we saw the throw to Mitchell down by the pylon that, that drew the pass interference. But do you remember that little throw where JT, it was like an RPO and the ball kind of came out of his hand weird. Like he was trying to stop and pump fake. Uh, he had a guy break open late there. And I think he was trying to pump fake it and get it to him. And, and he wasn't able to stop the from himself from kind of throwing the slant, but point being pretty quickly in that game, it seemed like the staff realized that didn't really have to take chances like it just felt like Clemson yeah. wasn't going to be able to score, and so I, I think that they just dialed it back and and tried to work on a game plan that was going to wear out that front seven. Um, the other I mean, side of this too is that Clemson's really really good, right? Yeah. Like they're an incredible defense, and uh, JT and, and Kirby both said like what they expected Clemson to run on uh, defense was not what they saw. I mean Clemson was dropping eight a lot. And I think that's the the key point here, right? Is like Clemson dropped eight because what Georgia put on tape with JT Daniels at the end of last season scared them and made them worry Georgia was going to go over the top with explosive deep balls and tear them up. And so in order to mitigate that, 
you know, they tried to keep everything in front of them and Georgia just took what was there. And so I think that is something that will get kind of lost in the wash of this game. But the, the offense that Georgia is running is forcing teams to play them very, very differently from a defensive standpoint. And you didn't see them load up the box with eight guys. And you also didn't see Georgia kind of try to take too much meat off the bone. I think they could have run a little bit more at times. And there was times where maybe they should have run a little bit more, but they never said, you know, okay, we're just going to try and pound the rock because you're dropping, you know, you're dropping. Like they, they didn't let what Clemson did defensively dictate their tendencies. And I think that was, that was probably the key. From the offensive side of the ball, I am a little surprised um, that wasn't more of a, grind it out just get some yards on the ground and i mean i to that point they 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 tried to stay balanced and i i guess would be the flip side of that i mean their longest play from scrimmage was only like 22 right. yards uh but you know they they won the game and that last game ending drive was just beautiful so you know we, we can certainly nitpick the offense <laughs> yeah. and and talk about how it wasn't what we expected but that's ignoring how spectacular a game the defense played yeah, truthfully, man, like, I think big picture, narrative speaking, um, once we see where this Georgia offense is in, in a month or two, when some of these guys get back and get healthy, we're going to probably look back on this and be like, Georgia had no business winning this game uh, yeah. with all the pieces that they were missing, and they did. And so the fact that they did, like – it's just so huge for the season, right? Because I, I think they'll probably be double digit favorites over everyone they play between now and, and Atlanta, the SEC title game. Um, but basically like if they go out and take care of business for the next 11 games, then, you know, the, the result of the SEC title game, what matter which way it goes, is not going to keep them from, from being in the college football playoff. Uh, so just to be able to steal that win last night was so huge for the way the rest of the season sets up. And, um, you know, they made Clemson look inept last night. They made DJ look confused. And that was another thing we talked about that no one else was, was DJ had never been in an environment like that. And he's still a young quarterback that's only made two career starts. And he looked like it last night. He yeah. looked panicked. And you, you, you talked about it. You credit know. to the game plan for making that happen. I mean, yeah, we, we wanted to keep, keep him off balance we wanted to put pressure where there i mean you know we brought more than the front three or four but that was because it was working you know they weren't doing it at necessity they were blitzing and and blitzes were getting there putting pressure we did not we kept him contained he didn't break make any significant plays on his with his feet and uh yeah we frankly just whooped him on the i mean on the offensive on the rd line whooped their butts on the d and it was awesome to watch and uh, we can't go any further without talking about yeah. the play of the game, right? Oh, my God. Christopher we Smith. Um, yes. Our, our guy, the official ambassador of dog sports is Christopher we, Smith. We are his guys. Uh, in, in truth. We signed him to an NIL deal this summer. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Chris is as good of a human being as there is out there in the – in the universe uh he's a con guy i actually was texting with him uh yesterday morning for the game wishing him luck um and i uh, i was like go out there and have fun remember that you know it's supposed to be fun and tell me he didn't have fun last night <laughs> with that play man um so i was so happy for him um truthfully like just from a standpoint of being in a stadium that might have been the most fun Georgia football play I've ever like witnessed in person. Uh, that game was just like that slugfest, and it felt like a tug of war, and every little inch of the field was being fought over. And all of a sudden, you saw him, you know, step in front of that receiver and jump that route. And this that was the first kind of real explosion of noise that you heard in the stadium that night, which was cool in its own right after COVID. Um, yeah, and like as he was running the as he was running it back, like I was like, "Oh my God, that's Christopher!" Um, you know, I, I finally realized it was it was twenty nine out there. So, 
such a fun moment. So happy for him and his family and uh, couldn't happen to a better guy. But um, you might yeah, have, you I mean, might, I think the, the other, you know, big. You might have heard me, too. I was going pretty crazy down at my house for uh, for Christopher. <laughs> um, it was yeah, it was an exciting totally. moment. I mean, and it, you know, I think of, you know, Godwin's catch at Notre Dame uh, from 2017. Um, and just that it just it seemed like that was the play that had to be made in that game. And Chris made that play Saturday night that just that had they were driving. They may not have completed that. Maybe that just falls as an incomplete pass or and we, you know, it's a zero zero game. But he made the play. And that is like you said, he's he's a great kid where I'm so happy to be associated with him. And that was it, that's the kind of play that you'll remember if this season becomes as special as we think it might be um that it yeah. may not happen without that play it's just awesome 100 percent, i'm with you 100 percent. and i think the other thing to remember about all this is going into this game uh you know we were we're really bullish on georgia's defensive line and we talked about how this could be a game like we saw in the super bowl with you know where just the d line was so disruptive that the offense really couldn't do anything. And and that's exactly what happened. But I didn't think that we would see Georgia's defense outscore Clemson's offense. Like that possibility, I don't think crossed anybody's mind. And I just want to say that out loud again, Georgia's defense outscored Clemson's offense because it's such an absurd uh, concept. It's such an absurd thing to think about. Yeah, and this play right here, or this whole series down here on the goal line yeah. was – was obviously huge, but uh, this second down play from Bernie right here, um, I, I still haven't had a chance to watch the game, but I was sitting right on this goal line right here, uh, and he made a tremendous play coming in there and breaking that up. Like That's somebody that I think a lot of Georgia fans talked all season like Tyke Smith was just going to come in and take his position. And, you know, that was that. And a guy that's been in the program for four years, five years, however long it's been, and, you know, really didn't see snaps until the end of last season. And last night he looked like, a, you know, an all-conference kind of performer. I mean, he was in all coverage the field. perfectly all evening. So, yeah, um, congrats to him. And, like, I think just narrative-wise – that's sort of the last point that I want to make that's been stewing in my head all day is uh, we've heard this narrative kind of pushed around it. I don't know where it started, but like, like a lot of things in the sports media, one person says it and then nobody does their research. And so they assume it to be true. And that narrative is that Kirby smart is, is a bad developer of talent, right? Um, the 2018 and 2019 classes. is, you know, I think one of them was number one, one of them was number two. Like, you saw those kids come to fruition last night, right? Nolan Smith, like, making an impact. Trevon Walker, same deal. Adam Anderson, same deal. Um, you know, Latavius Prinny, like, you had a walk-on out there playing safety against Clemson and, and locking down their wide receivers. You had a, another walk-on in Jalen Johnson out there who I think had the, the, you know, the longest pass completion of the night, like Georgia found production from the guys down the roster. But the other point is just in high level college football, the, the difference between a sack and a pressure is a half step or a hand placement. And it takes time to teach those things and, and it requires technique and discipline and Kirby smart and that staff have, brought these guys along and you can see the improvement in every single one of them since they came on campus. I mean, Kobe Dean was everywhere and he's been a stud since the day he walked on campus. But like there was with him last night, there was no thinking. Like you could just tell he knew what to do at all times. And right there, like he saw that hole, he took it and he's probably the spy on that play. Cause he's often the spy. So Kirby smart has developed these kids into studs and this Georgia defense just, it's not one stud. Like it's not just Jordan Davis in the middle. They have game wreckers coming from every direction at all times. And you can't game plan to neutralize one guy because any of them can, 
can wreck a play if they're left in a one-on-one matchup. And I, I think like that whole narrative of, of Kirby smart can't develop died on the field in Charlotte last night with what Georgia did, who they did it with the team effort that it was. And those guys that were heralded recruits, you finally saw them live up to the ranking after a couple of years in the program. And there's a reason that a career in college football is four or five years, not one or two. Um, so hats off to, to Kirby Smart, but also hats off to those kids who have put in the time in the weight room, in the film room, worked hard, been dedicated, and saw saw that pay off last night. Yeah, I was – I mean, you know, it's like we've often talked about on offense about what happens if your play, plan A doesn't work. Well, man, our plan A was defense <laughs> or – you know, and you know, they brought it. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was exactly right. Sometimes you, you do have to manage a game. Sometimes you don't, you know, just make, you know, just call plays because that's what you want to play. You play in the, the, the hot hand and the hot hand was defense. And like you say, the defense outscored both, both offenses for that matter. Um, and not just Clemson's, but yeah. Georgia's yeah. too. It was, it was in, and it's, it, everyone wants to score points and big, Long touchdowns are awesome, but man, that was that was fun to watch that defense ball out. Man, I enjoyed it was. Ev- every snap, and uh, I'm just so happy for all those guys you talked about. The guys that have been there working their tails off for this program and for this, you know, the opportunity to do this on a national stage, and they brought it, and that was freaking fantastic. Yeah, and I think you know the defense that Georgia has, it, it would be hard to you know, especially after one week to, to act like anyone else in the country is really anywhere close to, to what they are and where they are right now. But I will say if there's anyone that is, it's Clemson's defense. Right. And so just let's, let's give it some time and see how the next few weeks unfold for, for this offense and, you know, see, see where things are when we get to, you know, October, because personally, I'm not worried about whether or not Georgia can produce explosive plays. I think they, they can, and they will. I also think that the, the game plan that Todd Monken put together last night was very NFL esque. And it was the type of game plan that you put together when you have to deal with a uh, Jadavion Clowney or a uh, Vince Wilfork or one of those types of, you know, hall of fame level just freak talents, uh, you know, a Miles Garrett uh, on the defensive line. It was quick stuff, and it was screens, and it was a just a lot of get the ball out fast and stay ahead of the chains. And Georgia averaged a little over four yards of play last night, but guess what? If if you multiply four times three, it's twelve, and twelve gets you a first down. And I think that's <laughs> yeah, you know, that's what they yeah. wanted. All right, so to pivot just a little bit. Um, we, we did get some news. Tate Ralich is out for the year. Um, and that sucks. Mm-hmm. He had won a spot on the right side of the line and he's, he's going to have to get, yeah, he's going to have to get uh, surgery on his foot, but you know, we talked about it. I wrote about it. That is an extremely well recruited position and we don't want to ever see guys not get a chance to play, but we have a Marius Mims that that's going to get an opportunity to play. Um, it's, he's going to get a challenge, uh, this week coming up with Alabama, Birmingham, uh, you know, maybe not an offense, but, um, it, well, actually that's a good defense, uh, that's going to, that's going to be challenging him and, and it's a very good defense. Yeah. And, uh, so, but we got, we do have some games that we should be able to win with our talent and get these guys some reps. So I, you know, un, not unlike last year where the starting offensive line wasn't the one that finished the year. So I think we're going to see some growth and some, some names, I'm excited for for Mims and some of those and, and Broderick Jones to get some get some snaps, uh, um, and, Broderick, and that's yeah, yeah. and uh, so that's the news that we're gonna see. And that's where we're gonna talk no, about. Yeah, what, certainly, I was gonna say yeah, and to your point, yeah, we're gonna hear a lot about what the offense didn't do uh, this week going into it and what we have to do to improve. But uh, I'm I, I think we're gonna be fine on offense. I still believe that uh, that we're gonna be explosive and, and electric on offense. 100%. Last night was a really unique game between two really unique teams where both were returning a ton on defense. And um, yeah, it's just, it, it's not good. That's not normal 
it's not the normal matchup you see week by week, uh, even in the SEC. So it was a fun throwback game. Georgia did what they did needed to do to win, but don't, you know, don't think that we're going to become, you know, an all screen and slant and out offense. That's not what's happening. It's okay. Um, as far as the Rattledge injury, it sucks because at least from what I could see in the stadium, those first couple of drives when he was in, he was doing a really good job and he was handling uh, like guys like, uh, you know, Brian Breeze, Brzee and whoever else they have up there, all those monsters, um, you know, Miles Murphy, Miles Murphy was yeah. kept in check, which I don't think he was matched up on Murphy, but um, yeah, I mean, that whole defensive line is talented throughout the two deep. So it seemed like he was getting a push and, and doing a good job. So it's going to be interesting, I think, just to kind of see how they shovel that around. Cause like Erickson came in and I think he struggled a little bit at first when he came in, but he settled down and, uh, definitely played really well, especially on that last drive. I mean, yeah, they were you know, running Georgia they were, as a offensive line unit. Yeah, they were running the ball to the right side. <laughs> That's where our first downs came from. Um, and you know, I, I we've yeah. got we've got guys up there, and uh, I we're gonna get some chance to to get better on offense. And clearly, the defense will get better too. As scary as that might sound for the uh, guys we got to face on our schedule, but that defense is ferocious. Totally. No, they are 100%. Um, and I think that, like, it, it will be interesting to see if uh, Salyer maybe comes back inside to a guard spot, if a guy like uh, Mims or Broderick Jones can can really assert themselves at tackle over the next few weeks. And truthfully, that might be the higher ceiling version of Georgia's offensive line for 2021. Um, but – I mean, he did it. He played great last night. Don't get me wrong. Uh, so, I, I there's like you said, there's so much talent in that O line room that there will be a, a few combinations that that work and they can figure out. So, don't sweat about that. We got UAB on deck. Uh, you know, you and I will be back later this week, maybe with some. Uh, I'm sure we'll do a little bit of film review on Clemson before we turn the yeah. page, just because that was you know such a big game. I want to get some plays for Alabama Birmingham. They had a great game against Jacksonville State the other night, kind of kicked off the football season. And I want to know yeah. who they are. And I want, uh, and I think uh, getting to know those players because this, you know, it's a that defense was one of the best in the country, certainly one of the best in the group of five last year. Thirty six percent success rate allowed. They they kept up those same metrics again in their first game. So um, we're going to be challenged that offensive line and those, and the wide receivers, whether it's some of the guys that are going to come back or the ones we had on Saturday night are going to be challenged to, to put up some points. So, um, I'm not saying we shouldn't win the game or I'm not going to try yeah. to months in too hard on you either to uh, borrow a phrase from our friends over at my guy to podcast, but, uh, yeah, let's right. don't take anything. Don't take anything for granted as a Georgia fan. You should know that enjoy this victory. Enjoy this win. Enjoy that win on the national stage, and let's pivot to the next narrative that they're going to throw at us about what we can't do. One hundred percent, yeah. And uh, you know, UAB is a really good program. Like you said, uh, they have a great defense. I think you said thirty-six percent success rate allowed. I saw somewhere you said that uh, maybe earlier this week when we were talking. So that's you know that's there are no slouches over there. They uh, they all have scholarships too. They are a G5 team, but they're a very good G5 team. And I think they present a, a good type of challenge where, you know, Georgia, we can actually learn something by how Georgia plays next week. It's not going to be just like a an FCS team or a really bad D1 team where Georgia could roll anyone on out there that's on the roster and win by 60 and, you know, just kneel it out basically in the second half. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to, to looking at more Clemson and, and looking at UAB. And uh, we hope everybody will, will join us for the ride this week. Uh, enjoy it. And uh, enjoy your Labor Day holiday tomorrow. And, and we appreciate all you guys. You and I know that at Twitter has, uh, has really jumping on the uh, dog out West bandwagon, which makes me so happy. You've been busted so much <laughs> rear end. And uh, you're doing good stuff, and you're you're smart and you're funny, which are the two best qualities uh, to have on Twitter. <laughs> with that, wow. all right. With that, we're gonna. Well, I appreciate take it. Take us That's out, kind of you. Take us out of here. Well, 
You are Josh Hancher, and you can be found at dog underscore stats. Um, if you're not following Josh, there's not a better uh, stats, data, info, graphs follow in Bulldog Nation than him. If you want to understand advanced statistics, if you want to understand what success rate means, um, net yards per play, all this cool stuff that we reference a lot, Josh is an essential follow on Twitter. Even if you don't want to understand that, he's still an essential follow. Um, I have a joke there. I have a joke there. Uh, I am Graham Coffee. There you go. Yeah, totally. Um, you can find me at Dog Out West on Twitter. You can find our show on YouTube at Dog Sports Live. You can find us on Apple and Spotify. Uh, Dog Sports Live, please like, please subscribe to us. Please leave comments, reviews. We love feedback. We love interacting with you guys. And please follow us on Twitter at Dog Sports underscore live. Um, that account's been picking up lately, and a lot of you are starting to engage with it, which, is, which has been fun. So thank you guys for that. Um, yeah, Let's go dogs. This was a great weekend. It was a big win for the program. Enjoy it. And we will see you later this week.